Hi friends, Lindsay here from Diary of a Homeschool Mama, and today I want to share with you Science in the Ancient World. Um, it is by Dr. J. Weil, and it is from Baron Builders. I think I said that right. But um, I am using this with my oldest. He is in fifth grade. Before this, we were using um, Sassafras Science, which is what I am still using with my youngest, who is in second grade. But for my fifth grader, it just really wasn't enough, and... Um, I don't know, he kind of struggled with the repetitiveness of it, like every worksheet through the week was kind of the same thing. So I decided to give this a try. I've heard a lot of really good things about it. Um, I did purchase Science in the beginning a while back, and I wasn't as much a fan. It was kind of their easier one, I guess. So we decided to go with Science in the Ancient World this year and give it a try. Um, so yeah. When you first open the book, you have the introduction, and then you have how to use the book, and then it goes into talking about the experiments and activities, and it has a whole list broken down by lesson for everything you're going to need for the experiments. And honestly, most of the experiments, it's very simple items that you would have laying around in your house, um, like... A handheld mirror, um, super glue, let's see, um, it says these are materials that actually might take some time to, to acquire. So these are the ones that would take a little while and then when you turn the page it has all of the, um, all of the items that you'll need. So like a ruler, um, a medium sized bowl, a can opener, plastic wrap, tape, salt and pepper, like really easy things that you're probably going to have laying around your house. Um, baking soda, a funnel, measuring spoons, measuring cup, a candle. So lots of things that are easy to get um, if you don't have them, but most likely you do. And it just makes this really easy for the parent. Um, so then you go into the table of contents. Lessons 1 through 15 cover science before Christ, part 1. And then Lessons 16 through 30 cover Science Before Christ, Part 2. Then we have Science Soon After Christ, Science in the Early Middle Ages, Science in the Late Middle Ages, and Science in the Early Renaissance. So opening up to Lesson 1, just to show you kind of how it's laid out, you have Reading to Do, and usually it's about two pages of reading, and then every lesson does have an experiment. Like I said, the things that you need for the experiments are pretty easy to obtain. You'll most likely have them on hand, um, so it makes the experiments really easy. But there is an experiment for every lesson. You're probably going to be doing about three lessons a week to finish it through the school year. There's 90 lessons, I believe, in the table of contents. So yeah, we do, we do three lessons a week. Um, so after he does the experiment and we finish the reading, then there is the section for lesson review. They have it broken down by youngest students, older students, and oldest students. This is obviously something you would determine by your individual child, but, um, youngest, we, we typically do all three of these. Um, sometimes we'll only do these two if this one is... Like, if I know that this one's going to be kind of too much for him, then we'll skip that. But we always do the youngest student, which is just the review questions for after the lesson that we discuss orally. And then we always do the older students. Um, he has a notebook that he does this with, just a plain notebook, where he writes down the answers and everything in. So, super simple. But I'm just going to do like a little uh, flip through just to give you an idea of what the book looks like. Not a whole lot of pictures. I mean, they're, they're, the pictures in here are pretty simple, but I don't really mind it. But like I said, so far we are really liking this. We are about eight lessons in, I think. And this covers a, a wide range of topics. Like each year you're going to be covering things to do with chemistry, things to do with physics, things to do with the human body, um, biology, astronomy, earth science. You're going to be covering a wide range throughout the entire year. And every single day it's going to be 
something different. So we've really liked that. Not too repetitive. The only thing that's repetitive is the setup. Read the lesson, do the experiment. But other than that, every day is something different. And even as far as the assignments for the kids to do every day is completely different. Sometimes they're drawing stuff. Sometimes they're answering questions. Sometimes they're making diagrams. Sometimes they're doing research. I mean, it's all different, different things going on. So really liking it so far. And I would honestly even venture to say it's probably okay for older than K through six. Um, I don't know if I'm correct on that or not. I mean, that's all going to depend on your individual child. But if you look at this, um, the older students in their notebook for this one, for example, they're going to draw a picture of a simple pulley and then next to it, draw a block and tackle with three pulleys, like the one pictured above. And then they're going to explain why the simple pulley does and then ex explain what the simple pulley does and then explain what the block and tackle do. So explain the significance of the number of pulleys. And then for the oldest students, so they would do that. And then if they were doing the oldest student as well, if it was like your oldest, if you were doing this with maybe like seventh or eighth grade, um, do what the older students are doing, but also suppose you were to measure how much rope you pull when you use a block and tackle, if you compared it to the distance that the object rises, would you expect it to be longer, shorter, or the same? Explain your answer and check your answer and correct if it is wrong. So, opportunity for research, um, definitely in the oldest student. So, I think that this could really be used for more than K through 6. I wouldn't say it could be used for high school, but, you know, maybe your older middle school students could definitely partake in this as well if you wanted to keep it simple and have just a family style science I think this could work really well so that is pretty much all for the textbook portion that I'm going to show but then it also comes with this helps and hints for the teacher or parent and this is really great because in here it kind of breaks down the lesson and helps you to teach it the best that you can. It gives all the answers for what you should expect for the review questions and also for the older and oldest student assignments. It's giving you an, an idea of what you should expect to see from your student. So it's very helpful. Let me see if there's anything else in here other than that. I don't think that there is. Oh, there is actually tests in here as well. If you wanted to test, they have um, a test for each. It looks like they have a test for each section. So there's like six tests, I guess. Um, this one covers science soon after Christ. So it's covering lessons 37 through 41 and 45. Um, but super, super in depth here if you wanted to do testing. So this is why I say that it really probably could work for an older middle school student um, because you could definitely have them do the older and oldest in the notebook and then you could have them do the test and it would really round it out to be a good curriculum for all ages in your family other than high school. So I wanted to show this off today and give you guys an idea of what it's all about. Um, but that's pretty much all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And I would love to know in the comments what science curriculum you're loving this year. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.